Hello friends, this is Ram Lakshmanan. In this uh, video, we are going to be discussing about different JVM memory regions and how JVM goes about executing your program, right? Friends, first let's kick off with this question. Uh, you can set your Java process memory, the maximum heap size by specifying the XMX argument, right? The maximum heap size. You can set it XMX to be 2 GB, 4 GB, or whatever the size is. Let's kick off with this question. If you set your Java process heap size, that is XMX to be 4 GB, will your Java process consume more than 4 GB of memory? Let me repeat the question. If you set the XMX as 4 GB, will your Java process consume more than 4 GB of memory? How many of you say yes? How many of you say no? Right? We'll find the answer to that now, whether it's going to exceed or it's going to be within this limit. Right? Friends, for, to answer that question, we want to understand the different JVM memory regions. Let's look at what are the different JVM memory regions. The very first region is called as the young generation and then the old generation. Whenever you create a new object, let's say I'm a developer, I'm writing a code, new car object I'm creating, then those objects goes to this young generation. And if these objects are going to be living for a longer period, then the JVM promotes the object from this young generation to the old generation. So when you declare XMX as 4 GB, that means you are setting only the size of the end generation and then the old generation. After that, there is a one more generation called as a meta space, right? This meta space is the region where the metadata definitions, that is your class definitions, dot class file, and the method definitions that is required to execute your application is stored into this meta space. So they are outside this XMX, what you specify. And the size you can set, you can govern the size of this region by setting this max meta space size. And is that's all it is? No, there is some more. There is another region, some people call it as a off heap, native. There are different names to that. But for our discussion, let's call it as a others, right? There is a others region. So in this region, is where several more other important aspects of your application is stored. Where is the threads are stored? Threads are a very essential artifact to execute your program. Where are the threads stored? The threads are not stored in this end generation, old generation meta space, but they are stored in this others region, right? And also in, in Java virtual machine, the garbage collection is automatic. That is, where is the, inf where is the memory required for the garbage collection is stored? they are stored in this others region, right? And also the code as a developer that I write is not the code actually the JVM executes at runtime. JVM does a lot of hotspot compilations imp to improve our code performance. Where does the memory comes for that hotspot compilations? Where does the memory come for optimizing your code? They come from this others region. Not only that, connections, right? Our applications, a lot of uh, customers connects to our application. That needs connections. And our application connects with several backend system of record. These, those needs connections. Whereas those memory for the connections are coming from? They are coming from this others region. And file descriptors, say writing to the logs, reading files. Where is the memory for the file descriptors are coming from? They are coming from this others region. And let's say you're a legacy application, you're talking with JNI, Java native interface and connecting with native applications. That memory is also coming from this others region. So friends, when you actually set XMX, you are only setting uh, two important regions of the JVM, the old generation, young uh, generation, that's what you're setting. But after there is meta space and after there is this others region. So, uh, so whenever I explain this, uh, engineers ask me, whether is there's any one system property that I can set, which can govern the size of this others region. Friends, unfortunately, there is no one such property which can set for this others region. Typically, you can use a rule of thumb, like 80% of the memory. For most applications, this rule of thumb will work. 80% of the memory will be taken by this young generation, the old generation. The remaining 20%, you want to keep it for meta space and then the others region. Okay. Equipped with this knowledge, let's move further, right? Friends, now what we will do is we will we'll try to execute a sample Java program as if how JVM executes it. And now we will see where all the objects goes to which regions and what happens inside the JVM, okay? 
So for our discussion, I put together this very simple vanilla hypothetical program. Let's see what does this program does. Here there is a simple example. There's a class. It has a main method, which is an entry point to all the Java applications. And it has a method A, right? This main method is invoking method A. And this main method, let's see what it's doing. It is initializing a primitive data type integer, x is equal to 1. And from there, it goes on to execute the method B. And method B, what it's doing is it's instantiating a complex data type. It's instantiating a car object, right? And then it goes on to invoke method C. Let's see, method C, it's only initializing a, a primitive data type float. Z is equal to 2.11. This is a very hypothetical program. Let's see how JVM executes this program and where all the objects gets placed, right? Friends, to execute any program, we need threads. Where are the threads created? As per our previous uh, discussion, the threads are not created in the Zeng generation, old generation metaspace, but they are created outside. So each thread has a thread stack, right? Let's say this red arrow right, for our discussion is as a thread, right? This thread has a stack. And this stack is created outside this young, old, and meta space. And, and now when thread comes, it's going to invoke this ma main method. When it invokes the main method, the main method is added to the thread stack frame. See, it is added now. Now, let's see what is the main method does. Main method goes on to invoke the method A. Now, now that means the thread is going to progress to method A. When it has progress, look what has happened. Method A is added into this thread stack frame. And now here this primitive data type x is equal to 1 is present. Friends, if it is a local variable, see in this case x is a local variable. Local variables are stored within this thread stack itself. If it's a member variable, it's going to be stored in the end generation. If it's a static variable, it's going to be stored in the meta space. Since the local variable, it's stored within this thread stack frame itself. And since this value is a primitive data type, one that's also stored within this thread stack itself it's also stored here itself now after doing this thread goes on to invoke method b now let's see what happens to this uh, jvm memory now it has come method b is added to this thread stack frame it's now added where is this variable y is going to be stored and where is this object complex object car is going to be stored right let's look at it now Friends, this car has a class file, car.class, a class definitions. Where are these class definitions stored? These class definitions are that there is a dot class def file, the class definition is stored in this meta space as the metadata. But the actual object, the car object, is stored in this end generation because it just now got newly created. It's only totally stored here. And since this y is a local variable, it's stored in the thread stack frame itself. You can see it's created here. It's now pointing to this car object, right? Making sense? Now thread progresses. It goes on to execute method C. Now let's see what happens to this thread stack frame. You can see method C is added here. And then this, since this float is a primitive data type and it's a local variable, it's stored here. The Z, the local variable Z is stored here. And it's a primitive data type, 2.11, they are also stored here. This is how the stack frame looks like and the memory looks like when JVM has completed executing all the methods. But after executing all the methods, now the thread will have to start exiting. It has to return from each and every method. Now let's see what happens to the JVM memory as it exiting each and every method, right? Okay, now first the thread is going to exit the method C. Now let's see what happens when it exits the method C. When it exits the method C, you can see the stack frame has been removed the C, the stack frame which was present is removed. And the variable Z is equal to 2.11 is also removed. Now the thread is going to exit this method B. Something very interesting happens now, my friend. Look at this. Now when this thread is going to exit this method, look at the diagram. You can see this B, this stack frame is removed and this variable which is pointing to car object is also removed. But the interesting thing is the car object and this car metadata, both of them continues to remain in memory. They will continue to remain in memory until the next garbage collection event runs. Only when the next garbage collection event runs, at that point they are going to be removed. Until then they are going to be resident in memory. Right? 
and now the thread has exited method b now it's going to going to exit method a now it's going to exit method a look what's going to happen this is going to be removed from the stack frame and exit result one is also removed okay now thread is going to exit this method main method also now then the main method is also removed but the thread stack which created is going to remain there until this thread terminates so it's going to remain there in this uh, video we saw a quick introduction of how JVM goes about executing your application. If you want to go into the more details of how to troubleshoot and optimize your JVM performance, you can consider en enrolling into my JVM performance and troubleshooting masterclass. The link for that is going to be given in the description. Thank you, friends.